I thought I'd do a few sessions um, where I can use Ella and Archie to demonstrate how to teach the postures used in dog yoga, um, as well as how to, to use them. Um, this is the first, and a really important thing that I wanted to point out is about the learning environment. So, it needs to be clean and clear and comfortable. So those three C's need to apply both to you as well as to your dog. So the area should be clear, and it should be clean, um, and it needs to be comfortable. So there's carpet on the floor down here, um, which I use for the dogs, and I'm on a nice comfy chair. I prefer sitting, some people like standing, or even with smaller dogs crouching, all of that is fine. You've got to make sure that you're, you're comfortable when you're teaching your dogs as well, because otherwise, uh, mentally, you won't be able to focus. So, there should be access to water to both of you and your dog. Um, so, a pint of water for you and uh, a bowl of water for the dog to access at all times. Um, the dog should be able to exit, so he can or she can exit through this door. There's also an exit over there that goes outdoors, so the dogs can go outside if they want to. Um, they're not contained. I find that, that if you're using an environment where doors are open and dogs can enter and come back and leave as they choose, you tend to get the best out of your dog because they're not forced into learning and they, they enjoy the sessions more. Um, so what do you need? I'd advise you to use a clicker. I like using a clicker, everything's quicker with a clicker. If your dog's happy with the noise um, and if your dog's happy and you're happy to use a clicker, that's definitely the best method to, to teach these sorts of things. It makes training a lot easier and it's really clear. Um, you also need treats. Training the treats is um, tricky to get right. So first thing is you don't want the treats to be too yummy, otherwise um, it stops the dog from focusing on and being able to learn and they just obsess about getting that food treat. Uh, it seems to make the process much slower. You don't want the treats to be boring and, and crappy because the dogs aren't going to work if they're not paid. Um, so you want like a medium yumminess food. I would suggest for a medium sized dog, treats should be mm, about this big, so mm, not far off the size of my index fingernail. For a small dog, half that size, for a large dog, double that size, although to be honest with you, large dogs tend to, to work nicely for the same sort of size treats as, as medium sized dogs. You want the treat to be really manageable in your hands, we're going to be counting out treats so you want to be able to pick them up and drop them. You want to be able to, to toss them on the floor as well for the dog, so you don't want them to be too messy um, and too oily. Uh, yeah. So, to begin, there are 30 postures, there are 15 expressions, and there are 15 actions in, in the basic uh, dog posture training. Um, all of these increase intelligence, vocabulary, flexibility, agility, along with building a good bond between the caregiver and the dog. Teaching the caregiver fun and uh, a, a different way to learn and to teach their dog uh, that's not necessarily as conventional as, as the methods that you've possibly tried before. Um, it's not about finishing, it's not about having a finished thing, this type of training. It's, it's about the journey. It's about enjoying training your dog, learning, about your dog, learning about his body language, um, learning what drives him, what motivates him, what he finds relaxing, what he finds distracting. Um, we learn as much as they do in these sort of sessions. So it's not necessarily about that finished result. I don't think I've ever met a trained dog. You know, a dog that, that they're training, their learning is finished. The same way that I don't think I've ever met a human that has learnt. It continues and, and it's really important that we, that we stop looking at training as destinations. Goals are brilliant, um, but, but it doesn't ever finish. So for this reason, it's about teaching the dog what's gonna get them that reward. So we don't say uh uh or no, or use those sorts of markers to say that's not right. Because getting it right in this sort of learning is just part of getting it wrong. We want the dog to feel confident to express themselves and to try things out. Um, if you end up with a dog that won't try anything out, it's much, much, much harder to teach them anything. So when things don't go right, or when the dog just practices stuff they've learned before, we, we let them practice it. When they decide to leave, we let them leave. They choose to come back, they choose to learn, um, and, and that's really important. But you'll see more of that as we go along and do the sessions. 
Um, the postures that we teach uh, are all taught for a reason and various chain sequences, so sequences of lots of postures that have been taught linked together um, are, are, are also taught for, for a reason with sort of medical, physical and psychological um, well-being in mind uh, and specific sequences can be used for specific problems such as separation anxiety or, or um, dog dog reactivity or you know oversensitivity, sound sensitivity, that kind of thing. Different sequences of postures um, can help different dogs. Again I will go into that more at some point. Uh, generally the, the, the training itself um, can be used also to increase motivation uh, or to decrease arousal um, which is what I do predominantly in, in, in one of my dogs that I'm going to use. I'm going to use Ella for some of the training. She barely knows anything um, to do with this kind of stuff so it'll be fun and I can use that to show how to train things from scratch. I'm going to use Archie who's done a lot of this uh, to show how to increase duration and hold and extension of postures um, as, well as, as well as how to reduce pace which is very important but again I'll talk about that later. So first, um, you've got to look at what criteria we're going to teach. So the first criteria I'm going to use for Ella is going to be any movement of her head to the left. So even an eye twitch or an ear twitch or anything like that, anything on the left hand side of her head when she's in a sit that she does is going to get a click and a treat. I think maybe 10 times I'll do this before I reassess what my criteria is going to be. I think 10 repetitions should be enough for me to realise, is she, do, do I need to do this more or should I move on to the next stage? So because I'm doing it 10 times, what I'm going to do is I'm going to count out 10 treats. Um, counting out treats as opposed to counting in your head, in my opinion, makes much more accurate, better training because we can focus on the task and we can fully immerse ourselves in what the dog's doing as opposed to counting in our head, oh did I get to 6, did I get to 10, should I change? Um, it also gives us a natural break where the dog can process the information and we can process the information and have a sip of water and go, what do I train next? What shall I change to make this better for her? Um, so I'm going to go and put this boy in a crate and uh, give him a con to do and I'm going to get her out and we'll do a little bit of training. side of her face that counts. So I'm going to count out 10 more treats and what I'm going to look for is just slightly more obvious movements. So she's beginning to move her head there as opposed to just twitching her ears. So I'm going to, I'm going to use that and I'm going to start asking just for a little bit more. So that was a nice one. starting to get it now. You can try out some other stuff which is fine. Good. Good. So before that got her a treat and this time it hasn't so she's not sure so I'm going to wait for this. A little bit more of her head move before she gets it. This is called shaping. So she's doing a bit of processing, she's getting a little bit frustrated. She's pouring. She's come back to work, so that's 
good. If she had continued that, I probably would have just thrown a treat on the floor and let her wander out of the environment and, and let her have a little think about it. You can see that she's beginning to fizz up a little bit in her body language. You see she's moving around a lot more and beginning to wince a little bit. So that's 10. So I think that's a really nice place to break. So when dogs begin to show that kind of um, either excitable or a little bit frustrated behaviour, what I tend to do is throw them out of the environment to learn and say, toss a treat out of the environment, let them go and have a think about it, have a sniff around. And, uh, and then they decide when they come back. Um, as long as you do this quickly, before the dog uh, becomes um, too frustrated and barking and all that kind of stuff, then they tend to come back much quicker into the environment and want to continue learning, just like she's done here. So when they come back into the environment, I'll repeat another five treats, I think, would be about right for this dog, um, to do that same criteria before moving on again. So now I'm going to keep, keep up the pace, I'm going to hold on and wait for just slightly more, good, like half a head turn before she gets her treat. We'll do this for 10 more treats and then for her I'll probably call it a get day with this session. Sessions don't last long, that's part of this. We don't want to push this dog really far and get her doing the whole finished trick before the end. We want her to have a really enjoyable little learning process and use her brain and really think about what she's doing. So I'm not going to put a verbal marker, a cue to it today. I'm not going to teach her what word or what action I want her to know means use your head like this. I'm just teaching her that that, that gets her the reward. Tomorrow we'll take it to, to, to the next step. Um, and I'll also use Archie to show how we can use this around things that we're just worrying or frustrating or difficult. Good girl. Good girly. Well done. So now we're going to have a little puddle. You are just clever. You are never girl. Oh my God, yes. Oh yes. What a clever little fuzzy dog. And that's nice. So today um, is the second day. Uh, yesterday I did the other training. Um, and so this is a day later. Uh, even though it's all in the same video. Um, I'm going to teach Ella a cue in a moment. Uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about cues with uh, posture training. Dogs do tend to have a preference towards either action or verbal cues. Different dogs have a different preference. Uh, I have a preference as well and people have, have a preference. My preference tends to be towards action um, and I'll talk a little bit about why in a moment. But to teach the cue what we do is we get the dog to repeat the, the, the behaviour when we're sure they know what they're doing to get that click. We, we can then cue it. So to cue it to start with I would say stretch right and then I would look towards the direction that I want the dog to look and stretch in. Um, once I've repeated that 10 times and the dog seems to be getting it, I will then do, do the same but just use the word. So stretch right, wait for her to do it, click and treat when she gets it right. Then I'll just do the action, wait for her to get it, click and treat when it's right. Um, and then I might vary it up and do a couple of actions and a couple of words. And then I might ask her to do something she already knows, like, like lie down and then ask her to sit, and then ask her to do it again, just with the birds, so that I can make sure that it is then sort of nestled into her vocabulary. Um, when, this is the first one, but when you've trained five or six different ones, you can then start interspersing them, so you're asking her to look left and then look right, and then, you know, um, do a paw raise or, uh, you know, whatever. Just to make sure that the dog fully understands that this word, what it means, and it's different to the other words. Um, so, in a minute, I'm going to do that uh, with Ella. Um, so firstly, what I need to do is I need to count out my treats again. So to start with, when I'm first doing a session um, the next day, or even if it's 10 minutes later, I'll go over the, what I did the day before just to make sure that the dog fully understands it. So to start with, the first thing I'll do is just click and treat her 10 times for stretching her neck in the direction that I want her to, to stretch in. Okay. But to start with, I'm not going to emphasize it too much, even though she was getting it better yesterday. I just want to make sure she knows what she's meant to be doing, because the emphasis does come in time. So 
So now in the last five treats, I'll emphasize getting her to really stretch again. Good girl. Right, so now I'll count out another 10 treats. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, brilliant. And I'm going to start using the cue. So, stretch right. Good. Ella, stretch right. Good girl. Ella, stretch right. Good girl. So it confuses her a little bit, she's got a little bit confused, which is fine. And often bringing the cue in does begin to slightly disrupt what the dog's doing. Ready, Ella? Stretch right. Good girl. Stretch right. I want her to... Good girl, yes. Ella, stretch right. I want her to really stretch. Good girl. Ella, stretch right. Good girl. So she's getting a little bit frustrated. I think it's because we've kept things exactly the same. She's getting a little bit bored of this. Ready, Ella, stretch right. She says, I am. I know this is boring. So I'm going to start just using the word for her. So I'll count out five more treats. Ella, stretch right. Mm -hmm. so she might need a break. So... When she offers something completely different, like a lie down or something like that, she's still <laughs> stretching right, she's just doing it in the lie down. But it needs to be in the sit for this, um, the stretch right in the down is a separate behaviour. So she's sitting again, good. And a stretch right. So we say very clearly. And we're going to wait for her to do it. There's a little bit of frustration. So she can move whenever she wants. You're a good girly. I know, it's exciting, isn't it? Good. Stretch right? Yes, good. So I'm going to reduce my criteria slightly. Stretch right? Because of her frustration. So she's stretch right? Yeah, good girl. Okay, so now I'm just going to do the action. And you'll see, I think dogs do tend to get it better just with the action than just with the word. Yes. So you can't see me doing it, which is a bit annoying, but never mind. Yes, good girl. Yes. Yeah. I also think that using an action requires a bit more of a thinking dog. Because it requires the dog to really watch what you're doing. Yes, good girl. Amy. So I want a bit more than that because I know she's capable of it because she did it a minute ago. Good girl. So I think we'll call that a day today with her. Good girly. So like I said before, sessions are short. Um, you don't want to overdo it. Uh, she's ready to come back and learn. But actually, I think that um, giving her a bit more time to process what we've done today uh, will actually mean that she, she gets it better um, next time that we practice it. So the reason that this is a liking to yoga is because we're actually looking for a bit of a stillness with these postures. We don't just want dogs to be going like this. Lots of people who have got frustrated and high energy and high drive dogs tend to do lots very, very quickly. They have a, a, a big vocabulary and they get their dog to sit and give a paw and beg and jump and spin and next, 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 next. Actually, what this practice is all about is about a stilling of the senses, um, which is how it is similar to, to kind of human yoga. So what we're after is we're after a calm, disposition. We're asking the dog to give a particular posture or a particular action slowly and calmly uh, with extension and also to hold. So these neck stretches are great for, for dogs when we actually want them to stretch their neck when they've got medical problems or they're doing some sort of physio. Um, it's also good because it strengthens the muscles and increases body consciousness um, as well as, as I said before, like flexibility and, and, and agility. Good girl. And um, so, like I said, the things that we want to really push is extension, which means how far the dog's head's going back, 
as well as hold, so holding it there for a duration, and then also pace, so going slowly. Um, I'm going to use Archie here. Archie does know a chained sequence already that we use quite often um, when we're practicing now. So the likelihood is, is that when I ask him to look um, right, he'll then look left because that's what he does in his chained sequence. Um, however, if he's really watching, he'll see that I'm actually just asking him um, to look in one direction. So the first thing that I will click for the first ten treats will be the extension, so how far his head goes back. I want, him, I want his head ideally to be up and back where it stretches the muscles properly. Um, so looking round like this isn't good enough, looking down is not good enough, I want up here. Then after we've done 10 treats of that I'll start looking at hold as well, so I'll be, I'll be clipping slightly afterwards to hold, to, so that he goes back, he's waiting for that click, he's waiting for that click, he's like where's that click, then I'll click. So I'm just holding him for slightly longer and slightly longer. Um, and then after that, I'll do 10 treats of, of extension and hold, where, where he only gets clicked if he holds his head in the proper extension and for a little duration. Then after that, I'll click the 10 slowest ones, um, so I'll begin to work a bit on pace. see whether or not he was going to listen to what I was asking for, which he did, which is great. So that paw up there, that often happens when the dog's really stretching. I don't actually mind it, because he's just kind of putting some effort into what he's doing, which is fine. So it's not quite enough duration there. Good. And again, there's not quite enough extension. Good boy. That's a really nice one. Good boy. So I don't really, I can't really use him as an example of showing uh, this kind of stuff because actually he's kind of already, he's already got it. He's already there. Um, okay. So how do we use this out and about in practice? Well, obviously there are 30 postures, as I've said before, as well as 15 actions and 15 expressions. Different sequences of different postures help dogs to do different things, such as uh, motivate them or to calm them or to uh, increase drive or reduce drive or arousal or, um, as, as well as to uh, as well as to help them uh, stretch um, and to increase that body consciousness it also is uh, massively about connection between the owner and the dog so for example when you've got a, a problem dog um, exposing the dog to the to the trigger that elicits the problem behaviour in a very gentle and calm way under the dog's emotional threshold um, and to practice de-escalating and calm postures helps the dog to remain unaroused. A good example of this with Archie is, is cows, so he's a pit bull terrier so he was bred to bait bears and bulls. Um, when he becomes highly aroused he goes back into that instinctual behaviour um, and cows trigger him to become quite aroused. So what he wants to do is he wants to chase around underneath them, jump up and, and bite them on the lip <laughs> and have a great game of tuggy until the cow passes out. So <laughs> what we do is I do very gentle exposure to cows um, at a distance that he finds comfortable so that we do it on a long line so that we're safe and he can't actually get to the cows but the long line's often dropped or very loose. Um, to ensure that, that he's happy with that choice. And then we practice calm postures, such as his head stretches and his head turns, um, as well as other ones. And then as we're walking away from the cows, we practice a de-escalation 
a sequence. So it's a sequence of different postures and different actions, um, such as rolling on the ground that reduces his heart rate and calms him down. When we increase the practice of these things around specific triggers, I've found that the dog actually is so much calmer around those triggers, and then they tend to proactively um, partake in those behaviours um, themselves. So for example, actually you'll be wandering around cows and he'll be looking um, and using those side glances and as we walk away he'll tend to roll on his own now. Um, he's a much more aware of that pattern of behaviour and how it makes him feel I think. I don't know, I can't read his mind but um, that's either way in terms of what I've practised with that particular dog I can see that there's an increase in the frequency which he uses those postures and those behaviours and I know that those postures and those behaviours um, are things that helps him to stay calm and focused on me and helps to reduce his overall escalation uh, in those contexts. So <laughs> later we can talk through other poses uh, that will increase um, the idea to uh, about de-escalation as well as appeasement and as well as all the other bits and bobs that we do. This video is really just an introduction to talk through the real basic bits of how to teach this kind of thing and why we teach this kind of thing. Um, I, hope, I hope it's been interesting. Um, if you do have a dog uh, who has a problem with these sorts of things, don't go away and try and train on your own. Um, you do need uh, someone who's qualified and experienced in working with, with problem dogs and problem behaviours because um, threshold is, is, is really important. Um, and being able to ascertain what's appropriate as well as look at sort of why the behaviours are happening is really important. So I'll check out the IMDT website uh, for a list of positive and force free trainers. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll try and do another one at some point. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Feedback is always massively appreciated. So even if you think it's rubbish, I'd like to know why. Um, yeah, okay, thanks.